Good evening, everybody. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Peter Irungu, and I'll be your host for this evening. We are so excited that you were able to make it to this session, and I believe that God will speak to us through his servant tonight. We will be meeting tonight at 8 p.m. on YouTube, and for all my early risers, we have a session for you at 6 a.m. via conference call on the numbers that you see on your screen. Please invite your friends, invite your family, invite your neighbors, invite everybody so that we can all be blessed together. Our theme for the week is United Prayer for the Holy Spirit with tonight's emphasis on spiritual health. So open, let's open our hearts, let's open our minds to receive what the Holy Spirit has for us. Let's jump right in and begin with an opening prayer. Good evening, my name is Riziki and let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this evening and we thank you for another chance that you've provided us, Father, to meet again to study your word, Lord. Father, we are praying for the Holy Spirit, Father, and we pray that you may bless us and may you hear our prayers, Lord. We humbly pray that you may teach us this evening, Lord, and may you help us, Father, to know more about you and to come closer to you, Lord. We humbly pray for our speaker, Miss Amy, Lord. May you bless and may you use her to teach us, Father, and to help us, Father, come closer to you, Lord. It is our humble prayer that you may help us, Father, to be able to achieve the goal that we are seeking this week. And we pray to us now, believing in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Peter, for that wonderful welcome. Thank you, Riziki, for the opening prayer. Tonight, our speaker is Elder Amy Cromer, who is one of our elders at the West Wilmington Seventh-day Adventist Church. God has called her into the ministry of teaching and teaching she does, from the youngest to the eldest. But one of the most important things she continuously communicates is her conviction about the love of God for us. I believe we shall be blessed tonight as we see how to grow in our spiritual health. But before then, our young sister, Ellen a tinder is going to share this wonderful song in which for us to grow we need oil in our lamp. God bless you as she sings and as we listen to the message tonight. I'm going to play and sing Give Me Oil in My Lamp. Good evening, church family. Tonight, we're going to continue our week of prayer with a focus on the Holy Spirit and our spiritual health. Samuel Mills tells the story of the time that he worked for a trucking company. One of his friends was a truck driver. And on the particular night, this friend was on a truck route delivering products across the country. He made a stop at a, at a truck stop and called his family and unfortunately found out that his son, who was struggling with an illness, had passed away. Immediately, the truck driver locked his truck, gave the keys to the man at the truck stop and said, I've got to go home. I have an emergency. And immediately he found a plane flight and got home. Well, it was about nine o'clock when Samuel Mills got a telephone call from his boss. He was working on some accounts in one of their offices in Nashville, Tennessee. And the manager quickly informed him of what had happened to his friend, the truck driver, and to his son, and proceeded to tell Samuel that he needed to go and take the route and finish it. 
because he was familiar with the product and it was kind of an emergency and he just needed help. And with that, the manager hung up before Samuel could say, wait, I need details. I need help. Um, Might not even be able to drive this truck. (laughs) I don't have a license. But knowing that it was an emergency, he just went with his gut, went to the truck, got the keys, and before he started the engine, said a little prayer. He began his prayer with please and ended it with please. And we can only imagine what he was asking God to do. Well, Samuel um, began to drive the truck and he had about 17 stops to make over the course of three states. Um, He drove through the night, he drove through the day and began delivering the product. About midday, the weather changed. It began to rain and then to snow. But Samuel plugged away through interstates, through two lane windy roads and began to deliver the product. Finally, he came to the last stop. But the snow was beginning to thicken, and it was coming down much heavier than it was before. Now he had a decision to make. Was he going to spend the night in a hotel, or should he proceed home? Because by going home, he would be able to go and comfort his friend and be there for him and his family. So, as Sam's habit was, he bowed his head and began to talk to the Lord, asking him what he should do. Immediately, the feeling came over him that he needed to go ahead and drive home. And then, strangely enough, Samuel says he said out loud, I'm going, and began to climb the ladder to the truck uh, to begin his next journey. And that's when he heard it an audible voice saying, and I'm going too. Sam looked around and soon realized there was no person around. This had to have been the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to him in an audible voice, encouraging him, letting him know that he was not alone. You know, When Jesus was on this earth, he spent a lot of time teaching us uh, the people that were there with him and his disciples. In John 16, um, John is accounting Jesus talking to his disciples yet again, telling him that he was going to die and what would happen to them when he was gone. And in John 16, verse 5, Six and verses five, six, and seven. This is what Jesus says to them. Now I'm going to him who sent me. None of you asks me, Where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Now, we know that the counselor is referring to the Holy Spirit. Um, Sometimes he's referred to as the comforter or the helper. But this time, Jesus tells his disciples that if he doesn't go away, the Holy Spirit can't come in his place. Now, the disciples, I don't think, liked this very much. They were grieving the fact that their Lord and Savior, who had been with them for three years, night and day, was going to go away. And that was where their focus was. Well, I guess we're going to benefit from their hindsight because we now know that because Jesus died and went back to heaven, He could leave the Holy Spirit with us, and the Holy Spirit would be able to stay with us forever, even until the end of the world, even until Jesus comes back to take us to heaven with him. Now, I don't know if you can relate to this story, but I think we can all relate to the fact that we're sad when someone we love goes away or the thought of them not coming back. 
I want to kind of relate this story to a little experience Rodney and I had with our granddaughter. When she was about two or three, she had a sleepover with us because her mom and dad had somewhere to go. And we had so much fun through all the time that we spent together. Um, There was never a worry in the world and she knew everything would be okay because she was with us. Well, that night when it was time to go to bed, she began to worry. She began to be upset. She wasn't used to being at our house at night. She was used to her bed and to her mama tucking her in and she began to be a little uneasy. Well, Rodney and I reassured her and we let her know that if she just closed her eyes, when she opened them up, we would have a yummy breakfast and very soon her mom and dad would be home. Because we were with her, because she knew how much we loved her, she was able to rest in the assurance that in the morning her mom would come and be with her and she would get to go home with her. And I think that that maybe is how Jesus was meaning it for the disciples. That yes, I've been with you. We've had this wonderful time together, but I have to go back home. But I love you so much. I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to send my spirit to be even closer to you and to stay with you forever and ever and ever. So what does this have to do with our spiritual health? Well, I want to propose to you that the Holy Spirit has everything to do with our spiritual health. In fact, the Holy Spirit is essential to the dynamic and thriving life of a Christian. Our spiritual health is rooted in our faith and in our knowledge of salvation and the gift of the presence of the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, and in the hope of eternal life in heaven, where we will not have to part from our Savior again. So what do we do? How do we exercise our spiritual health? Well, as Christians, there's no other way to exercise our spiritual health than to build a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. How do we do it? We know the answer, I think, is through Bible study and prayer, and through sharing our faith with others. So when we think about that personal relationship, let's think about ways that we can study. Let's think about the things that we can pray for and the things that we can share with other people. And since we are talking about the Holy Spirit, let's consider this in our study. Let's think about what has the Holy Spirit done for us? Well, first and foremost, we know he dwells in us. The Bible says in Philippians 2 that he dwells in us and both to will and to do his good pleasure. The Holy Spirit leads us into a knowledge of truth. John 4 tells us God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth. The Spirit helps us know what to pray for. Have you ever been so distraught about something or so happy about something or you wanted to urgently pray for someone else, but you just couldn't find the words? That's where the Holy Spirit comes in. I love this verse in the Bible. Um, It's found in Romans 8, verse 26. It says, In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with through wordless groans. How amazing is that? Our God that lives inside of us interprets our human longings, our human desires, our human needs, and sends those up to the Father for us on our behalf. That to me mirrors what Jesus did on our behalf by dying on the cross to save us. The Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit is a comforter, which we mentioned before, and that he helps us resist temptation. I remember reading this verse once as a a young adult, 
and it just encouraged me so. It's found in 1 Corinthians 10, chapter 13. There is no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. That made me feel good to know that others were tempted like I was. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able. But here's the best part, but will also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. All of this comes through the Holy Spirit living in us. The Holy Spirit teaches us. I love that part, being a teacher. But the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, shall teach you all things and bring all all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said to you, John 14, 26. This is great for me because I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like I can forget the things that I'm supposed to remember. So it's very comforting to me to know that the Holy Spirit is not only going to help teach me things, but he's going to help me remember them when I need them. To me, another part of building your spiritual health is just to remember how we're saved and what the cost was to Jesus to do that and to the Father and to the Spirit, because you know the three are one. What was the cost for us to have Jesus, to have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us? Isaiah 53 verses four and five put it beautifully. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Isn't that beautiful? Because of Jesus, because of his wounds, we are healed. We are saved. The sin that was on us, He took, he bore that, and we are now covered with his righteousness, and then the Holy Spirit can dwell in us. It's so beautiful to think of what God did for us. Another way that we can strengthen our spiritual journey is to remember that that beautiful gift that we just spoke about is that. It's a gift. It's not something we earned. It's not something we can pay for. It's unconditional from the great love of the Father. Romans 8.1 says, Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And in Ephesians 2.8, For it is by grace you are saved through faith. And that not of yourself, it's the gift of God, lest any man should boast. We can't earn that gift. It's already been paid. There's nothing we could ever do to equal the price that Jesus paid for us. Remembering that, knowing that strengthens our spiritual health. It draws us closer to our Savior. As I was studying for this lesson, I came across a verse in Acts chapter 8, verses 20 and 21. And it was Peter talking to a man named Simon. Well, it wasn't Simon Peter. It was a different Simon. This Simon, the Bible says, was a sorcerer of some sort. And I guess he was around during Pentecost and he saw um, the apostles and the people Uh, receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. Well, he wanted the gift. So he thought he would offer some money up to pay for that gift. And this is what Peter had to say about that. May your money perish with you because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. You have no part or share in this ministry because your heart is not right before God. Repent of this wickedness and pray to the Lord. So even though Peter was telling him, you cannot buy this gift, this is, this is not good, <laughs> but you can repent 
and he can't pray and ask the Lord for forgiveness and acceptance. And isn't that beautiful? Here, this man was a sinner. He thought he was doing the right thing. He realized that he wasn't, but yet our great God is giving him that unconditional chance as well. You know, I want to reflect back a second to John 16, where we started. We know that when Jesus promised to leave us the comforter, it would be forever. Over and over and over, the scripture reminds us that we are not left here on this earth alone. Jesus has promised us he will never leave us or forsake us. That beautiful promise should cling tight in our hearts so that we will be encouraged through our spiritual walk day by day. We must read, we must take hold of these promises, and we must believe what they say to help our spiritual health improve. Now, remember Samuel Mills, who we read about at the beginning, the truck driver who had to uh, make the, the unexpected run? Well, I read his little devotional thought, and I wanted you to hear his words about this experience that he went through and what they meant to him. He says, the life, I'm sorry, the gift of eternal life and the Holy Spirit for a constant companion are the greatest gifts Jesus could have given his followers. Our beautiful churches can lead us the lost to salvation, and teach the Bible. But living a happy and successful Christian life will only come from knowing and experiencing your friends, the Holy Spirit, one-on-one. Some seem to think the Holy Spirit is difficult to get to know or is constantly watching to condemn our sins. But that's not correct. If you're a Christian, He is inside of you. Closer than your breath, isn't that neat? To be a to be your friend in every situation. This experience was a great step in faith for me, uh, Mr. Miles said. Mr. Mill said, I will always remember being in the snowstorm hundreds of miles from home and hearing the Holy Spirit say, and I'm going too. Brothers and sisters, we are promised in Jeremiah 29, 13, that you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. To have a strong spiritual health means that we are constantly seeking to get to know our Savior on a personal level and listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit that is dwelling inside of you. I want to challenge you today to grow your faith in God through Bible study, through prayer, through sharing your faith with others. I want you to challenge you to pray each day for the Holy Spirit's leading in your life. May God bless you all. And I hope that the words spoken here today will strengthen and encourage you along your spiritual journey as you embrace the Holy Spirit's dwelling inside of you. May God bless you all. Thank you, Elder Amy. Important lessons for our growth. To spend time in that Word of God. To be able to commune with God in prayer. To be able to share our faith. To hear God's call for repentance in our own lives. And to know that, yes, the Holy Spirit is a gift. And we too can be blessed by that gift. Tonight, friends, we want to take some time and pray for ourselves but also we know of individuals in our lives who are in need of growing also in their spiritual health we know that there's a struggle going on it's a great controversy a fight going on between good and evil and we know that God is calling us to do prayer and to be able to share our faith but before we share we have to pray that God may do the work of convicting the hearts by his Holy Spirit And so those five names, I invite you to be able to consider them. And as we listen to this song, as Brother Tito plays and sings along, 
take the time to pray so that we can grow in understanding of God's purpose in us sharing the faith, but also to whom does he want for us to encourage the spiritual growth.
to close this segment of prayer let us pray father just want to say thank you once again you have heard our prayers and lord you continue to hear our prayers we desire that lord in our own lives we can grow spiritually but also lord in our families in our cycles of influence in our neighbors co-workers we need lord your help that we can encourage others to grow spiritually too please lord bring the revival in our hearts and help us to be awakened knowing that the time is near when christ it shall all come to an end i pray that we might be among the number that you have assured us of the promise of salvation for this is our prayer in jesus name amen brother peter back to you amen and amen that is such a timely message for us concerning our spiritual health thank you to all who have taken your time to join in on the session this evening these evening sessions are recorded and are available on the youtube channels of the various churches west wilmington sda life in christ and hope community church so feel free to go back and listen to the messages again and take some notes as you'll be blessed by them I want to remind you again that there'll be another prayer session tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time via conference call with the number that you see on your screen. The number is 267-807-9601. I'll say it again, 267-807-9601. And the passcode is 556-325-035 pound, or hashtag as it's commonly known now. We will continue with the evening session tomorrow at 8 p.m. on YouTube. Please join us again and remember, invite your friends, invite your family members, invite your enemies so that we can all be blessed together. Again, my name is Peter Irungu. I thank you all for joining us tonight and may our spiritual health be restored in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye, y'all.